the NDS1 Unpacked, the TSP, a win or a loss? On the 16th of November 2020, President Emerson Nangagwa launched yet another economic blueprint, the National Development Strategy, NDS1, believed to be the seventh economic blueprint since the attainment of independence by Zimbabwe in 1980. Now, the NDS1 has overnight become a new mantra, but we can't move on to the NDS1 without talking about the TSP. Since we're in November, it's three years now under the new dispensation which has offered Zimbabwe an opportunity for economic reformation under a blueprint named the TSP, the Transitional Stabilization Program which was unveiled by Professor Mtuli Nube on the 5th of October 2018. The objective of the program was to leverage on the country's core competencies in natural resources to rebuild and transform Zimbabwe into an upper middle income economy by 2030. This would entail achieving a nominal gross domestic product GDP of 65 billion US dollars by 2030 and a gross national income GNI of $3,500 per capita and sustaining growth rates of 7% per annum for the next 12 years. Notably, some of the program's objectives included creating over 2 million jobs. However, under Professor Nube's TSP, Zimbabweans saw the return of the local currency, the Zim dollar, and the scrapping of fuel and electricity subsidies, among others. As it nears its end, the verdict among state actors and policymakers is that the reform program has been a success because it has managed to induce macroeconomic stability albeit with negative economic growth rates. Since the TSP ends in December 2020 and the NDS1 takes over, let's look at the successes and failures of the blueprint, that is the TSP. We will start with the negatives, but before we go there, let's hear what Dr. Manungo has to say. We've always envisaged the transitional stabilization program as a bridge towards the realization of our vision 2030 for an upper middle income uh, economy. We've had a number of challenges as we implemented the transitional stabilization program. But uh, overall, if one looks at the macroeconomic uh, uh, environment, uh, notwithstanding the challenges that we experienced, uh, especially uh, last year and early part of this year, uh, one can uh, acknowledge that we have now been able to stabilize the macroeconomic environment there is now price stability, st price stability in the labor market, price stability in the goods market, and price stability even in the foreign exchange uh, market. The key drivers of uh, stabilization in terms of the macroeconomic environment has been the persistence that uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance, uh, uh, Professor Mtuli, uh, and uh, his colleagues across the various expenditure ministries, they've persevered uh, with uh, austerity uh, during the last uh, two and a half years. Interesting perspectives. Some may agree, and some may not, but here are the negatives. Number one, the TSP has failed to stimulate economic growth and in 2019, against the growth target of 9%, the economy contracted by 6.5% due to climatic shocks and according to equity access, this is in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic that has caused strain on global growth figures in 2020. The economic contractions in these two years have been blamed on exogenous factors, but the magnitude of their impact brings to question the degree of preparedness and capacity of the government to absorb economic shocks. Number two, policy inconsistencies. And one will be quick to mention this on currency reforms. Third, corruption, corruption, corruption. Employment creation. The TSP did not manage to reach that 2.2 million jobs created target. And then, lack of consultation. Many people felt that it was not people-centered and that they were not consulted at all. On the other hand, notable progress has been registered in a number of domains. For instance, in the ease of doing business, where construction permits and operating licenses are now processed much faster under the Empowerment Act. In the energy sector, the $4.5 billion Batoka Gorge hydroelectric project is going to be a game changer. 
and also the 1.2 billion dollar expansion of the biggest coal-fired power facility in Zimbabwe, Wange Thermal Power Stations Units 7 and 8, which will see 600 megawatts added to the national grid, is progressing well, with the commissioning of the first unit, that is Unit 7, expected mid-2021. $3.5 billion worth of compensation to dispossess commercial farmers for developments they made on the land. Now, this is a step closer to resolving one of the most divisive policy issues of the past era. Still with agriculture, the $51 million Belarus facility and $50 million John Deere tractor facility for farm mechanization, these programs came as a boost to the economy and the country at large and all things held constant should guarantee food security and cut on grain imports. In the past 12 months, government has imported over 300 buses from China and Belarus, which has helped restore sanity in the public transport sector. The foreign currency auction system by the RBZ has helped ease foreign currency shortages and has dealt with the black market. In road infrastructure development, we've seen the resurfacing of major roads and highways like the infamous Harare Bike Bridge Highway. And this has been done by local companies. This is a boost to indigenization and shows that it can be done by us, for us. However, after all the checks and balances, there's still a lot more work to be done. And jobs, jobs and more jobs still need to be created. In particular, the issue of the 68% skills deficit needs to be addressed. We need to work on resuscitation of local industry, value add, and make sure we don't just import everything from eggs to toothpicks. We need to increase exports. The educational sector needs to be digitized and we need more STEM programs. All this and other grey areas are now to be addressed by the National Development Strategy NDS-1 according to Finance Minister Professor Mtuli Mnube. The NDS-1 is about inclusive growth and macro stability, food security and nutrition, governance and moving the economy up the value chain and structural transformation among other priorities. That is NDS-1 Unpacked.